You know, I don't make these videos much anymore because I feel like they'll, these types of videos, because I feel like they'll fall on deaf ears. And that's not fair to you who actually want to hear this type of deeper inner game content. Because I believe that growing your business and your success and all that stuff is really a reflection. And it's, there's a law of what's going on on the inside. And when you grow on the inside, then you can grow on the outside. In a little bit, I'm gonna uh, promote something about Jabber Summit, March 1st, 2023. So stick around in the middle of the video, I'll talk about it, it's pretty awesome. But um, it's free. So, uh, but what I'm learning is that the law of growing on the inside, I posted something on Instagram this morning talking about how it's really mental and emotional blocks that are blocking you from the success that you want, that are at the glass ceiling. So when you remove the blocks, then you just rise up automatically. Like if you're holding a beach ball down underwater and you're, and it's so rough and it's tough to do, right? You finally get tired and you let go and you give up. <sighs> what does the beach ball do? It floats and pops up to the top and just buoyantly floats on top of the water in well being. Why? because that's its natural state as a place to be in well-being. Just like if there's a dam holding back water and you finally just let go and you break or open the dam, it just all goes rushing. Well, all your success will come rushing in when you let go of some of the things that you're, um, one second. Let's check in my teeth because we got these really good uh, mixed nuts from Costco, like cashews and almonds, and I was eating them. It, anyways, they get stuck in my teeth. So, so, and this fascination has driven me into personal development, self-development world. I've read like 470, I'm on my 476th book right now between reading and audible.com, Obsession. And although the books help, um, it's the deeper self-hypnosis, st self day-to-day habits that are keeping you entrenched and unlocked in patterns that are not allowing you to evolve and rise up as fast as you could. You know, if you read Ken Wilber's book, Cosmic Consciousness, he talks about that there's lines, levels, states, and stages of consciousness. Like a master yogi might have spent his entire life becoming an ele a level 10 on one line of consciousness, but never even got to a level two on the next line of consciousness. There's Archaic consciousness, mythical consciousness, magical consciousness, pluralistic consciousness. There's integrated consciousness, all these different integral and the integral model, which I'm probably boring you, so I won't get too deep in that. Study Ken Wilber and you'll learn about that stuff. So, but what I do want to say one point about that is they've, they've researched that the only thing they can find is meditation that allows you to actually speed up your consciousness. Because I used to get on the phone with my great friend, Coach Rob, that I've talked about in a hundred million videos. He was also a great coach of mine and a great friend. Um, we talk about this stuff all the time and I used to ask him in the past, back in 2015, Rob, Rob, how do I speed up my consciousness so I get over all this crap faster and I learn faster and become successful faster? How do I speed it up? And so, if you follow the competency progression model, which is you don't know that you don't know, you have no idea that you don't know, all you know is you have pain, but you don't know where the pain is coming from, right? And then as it gestates and comes up, you might get to the point where you know you have pain and you, you actually know there's a problem, but you don't know what the solution is, but now you've been able to identify there's many different, there's technological competency. There's many forms of just talking about pain here because I want to talk about evolution and consciousness. I'm becoming successful holistically. Like screw just money and all that stuff. I'm talking about being a happy person with peace in your heart and peace in your home and peace in your life and peace in your marriage and peace in your business and peace in your relationships, peace in your body, peace in your sleeping, peace in your nutrition. Peace is the highest form higher than love. It vibrates higher if you study I'm going to go back to what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm just flowing now. If you study um, uh, Power Versus Force by Dr. David R. Hawkins in his several books, he talks about how they've been actually able to measure the different calibrations of consciousness. And you think love would be the highest? There's one higher than love. Peace. And so, and there's, there's seven different stages, uh, levels of uh, truth. Social truth, genetic truth, spiritual truth, uh, physical truth, emotional truth, psycho-emotional truth, social truth, 
and then uh, spiritual truth is basically the highest one. <laughs> and so if you're stuck on these lower primordial levels in what we call third density physical consciousness and there's gross, subtle, and causal, oh, why? You're, you guys are all leaving this video now. You're like, what is Kelphus uploading? Nobody wants to see this. All we want to see is lawnmowers and equipment and people doing silly, no. If you're still here, say in the comments, what up, doe? You're my people, okay? So this drive and this obsession has made me become obsessed with this because I was suffering in many different ways. Growing up poor, feeling inadequate, feeling unworthy in my business, in my personal life, in my health, in my marriage, even in my body, right? Uh, I used to work out all the time because I felt like I wanted to be good enough. I couldn't even go to the gym and work out and if like some some other buff dude, I'd feel insecure and be like, well, I gotta work out harder because I want my wife to look, think I'm hot. It was like, and then I would work, I got to the point where I worked out obsessively where I actually had abs and I was totally cut up and I, and, and I, I was exhausted and it wasn't even worth it because I was doing it for the wrong reasons. So and now I've been working out regularly because I really love it and it's for me and it's like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Like, I love working out and I have a, a true runner's high when I work out, right? Not comparing myself to anybody. So you finally have to let go and, and, and grow. And so when I talked about meditation and how do you speed up your consciousness, you know, the average man supposedly stops, uh, man or woman is different. Women actually mature a little bit faster and they actually evolve higher and consciously more uh, than men, uh, traditionally speaking, right, uh, according to these studies. So a man will stop evolving between 25 and 29 somewhere in his mid-20s, and then just flatline in consciousness all the way until about 58, 60 years old, and then he'll get a bump up in consciousness and start to evolve. And then, you know, and we're talking about like, so if you look at Jordan Peterson talking about P Peter Pan syndrome, you have grown ass men running around with the consciousness of still thinking in some areas that they're like 14 or like 22 or like these parts of their consciousness haven't evolved so they don't know how to deal with things in their life. Like one thing that's very personal that I can share that I don't talk about a lot anymore is like uh, my wife. I'm uh, uh, madly in love with her. She has a very, very articulate, strong personality. She's very wise. She has, she is brilliant, okay? My wife is so smart and so brilliant and her ability to articulate, like I feel like in her past life, she was like a high level lawyer or something and she's helped me evolve so much. I don't know if I believe in past lives, I'm just speaking. But um, it's, it, I, I feel very blessed. It's taken me, I've been with her 12 years, married for 10 now, right? A long time for me able to stand, me to be able, and, and I, I have regrets that I wish I couldn't do this sooner for her when she needed and required this. And I was so thankful that she stood by my side. Who, who loves you so much in your life that they're willing to put up with all your crap to be able to like wait for you to grow. We have a grow and evolve at different rates and different lines and levels and states and stages of intelligence. I've outgrown her in some areas and then she has to catch up and she's outgrown. Like that's what's beautiful about the sanctity and uh, matrimony of marriage is you, you, you work it all out and you grow together and you watch this beautiful life blossom. That's just my, my personal belief. And, uh, but what I was saying is that my consciousness and ability to just stand in presence with my wife, uh, it, whether she's happy or she's sad or upset or angry, right? Uh, I grew up in a household where people would raise their voices and yell at each other out of pure frustration, even yell at me, and there wasn't that calm peace that I'm talking about that was just really, really listening and understanding. So if somebody would raise their voice around me, I would instantly think that, you know, something, something's wrong. I couldn't, and now, um, my, my presence has grown so much that it's a whole new chapter of even my own marriage. I've dreamed about this moment forever, right? I'm so excited. And, uh, and so I hope that you have people in your life. And if you don't, you actually might. And you could just actually, so, so I'll say this one thing and I'll say this is why 
it's so important if you're gonna grow in your business, you gotta grow on the inside, you gotta grow in your relationships too. If you got somebody in your life, if you're not close to your father, call him up and say, Dad, let's, let's talk. And if you guys get in an argument, just keep trying and push through with love and realize that feelings hurt, but, or your mother or brother or sister, reconnect with people. And maybe you disagree on some things, but you can agree on one thing is that you love each other, right? And at the end of the day, what is the problem? What's the real problem? Are you just afraid, afraid of old hurts, afraid? Because one huge thing that we do as human beings that's really mean is we invalidate each other. Have you ever had anybody in your life invalidate you? You have a good idea or you tell them something and they don't effing listen to you or they make a joke out of it or they criticize you or put you down. They don't support your ideas and you feel like you can't tell them anything because they they truly don't care about and support you yet they're in your lives and you feel like maybe they're just a taker. They're just taking, maybe you're the taker. Maybe you're always taking and taking from people and you don't listen to anybody and you're so obsessed with your own ambitions or what you're thinking, that there's no room for anybody else. And if you wanna track down why that might be, it might be because you're in fear. You're in survival mode, you're terrified. You think in any moment the rug's gonna get pulled and you're gonna die, so you can't spend a second listening to anybody else because there's not enough time, because you gotta make money, because you gotta pay the bills, because if, 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 if you don't pay the bills, then the bills, then you could fail, and if you fail, then everybody's gonna leave you and you won't have any love. Nobody will love you. So you're not even aware that you're actually not being present with people and they perceive it as you're treating them like shit because you're actually just terrified. I've, I've experienced this, this is, I'm talking to myself right now, right? In my own fear of unlove and abandonment. I'm shaking right now a little bit telling you this in my voice. My fear of unlove and abandonment has made me not be present with other people because I, but the, all they want is love. The love is right in front of you this entire time. It's all of your defense mechanisms and emotional blocks. Like, it might be different for you. You might have something totally different. Elon Musk was interviewed, and he said something interesting in his college dorm room where he slept for free in college. He did this experiment and wanted to see if he could live off $1 per day. So he did it for a couple of months and he actually was able to do it by just eating ramen noodles and drinking water and whatever, a buck a day and he slept in his dorm for free and he had this epiphany because somebody interviewed him and they were like, how are you able to take these huge chances and risk and build Tesla and SpaceX and, and PayPal and, and do all these things? He's like, because I lived off a dollar a day and I realized he had this epiphany. He said that he would not die, that he, as long as he lived in America, he was ensured survival. He would not die. No matter what happened, he, would, he wouldn't he would die. Like something about that clicked for him and he felt like no matter what happens, I'm still gonna, he said my, that was he said, he said, my survival is guaranteed. At least my survival is guaranteed. All right, so I wanna do this uh, Jobber plug right now. I'm really excited about March 1st, the 2023 Jobber Summit event, All right? Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, the famous baseball player, he's gonna be there as a, uh, one of the main interview interviewee hosts, and he's got a very successful business. So, and it's totally free. Uh, if you're listening to this right now, go to Keith uh, on my Untrapped podcast. Go to KeithKelfis.com/resources. You could sign up there, or actually have some. I'll, I'll just right now. I'm a little ADD. Okay. Um, Jobber Summit is an annual free online event where home service business owners and management teams can connect with their community and get the expert advice that they need to reach new heights of success in their business. This is true. Okay, this is going to be a very powerful event, totally free. Okay, and also I'm sp sponsored by Jobber. I'm wearing a Jobber hat. I've been using Jobber in my business for like over three years now. I literally couldn't run my business or my business would be a disaster without it. So it, it really works. It's great software. And uh, so if you uh, want to register, if you're watching the video, um, go to keithkelfus.com slash resources. And the first link you'll see is Jobber. Just click sign up for free. You'll get reminders and you can join this free online event. And um, the event takes place Wednesday, March 1st, 2023. It's in the morning at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then there's an evening event from 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just can figure out your own time. On March 1st, reach new heights at Jobber Summit. Check out this free online event where service business owners and management teams can connect with the community and get the expert advice that they need to reach new heights of success in their business. You'll get advice from Alex Rodriguez, chairman and CEO of A-Rod Corp. And Clea Scherer and Joanna Templin, 
founders of the Home Edit. Join our friends at at Jobber. You can type in at Jobber at anywhere, almost any social network or yeah, it's just at, at Jobber to network and learn from experts covering in-demand topics. Don't met. Don't miss out. Register for free today and check the link in my bio. And then if you're listening to this, uh, my Untrapped podcast, Keith Kelfus, um, on all platforms, Apple, Spotify, everywhere. You can listen to this stuff while you work. Um, hashtag Jobber Summit. Uh, you would actually go to... That's really long, man. I got to make a new one, but... <laughs> Go.getjobber.com slash Kelfus hyphen Jobber Summit 23 hyphen podcast. It's way too much. Just go to uh, KeithKelfus.com slash resources. KeithKelfus.com slash resources, and you'll see Jobber Summit, and you can literally get in right there, okay? And then you'll get reminders. Okay, that's the last thing I was going to say about that. Now, back to our regularly scheduled primetime show. So... Uh, at the win- this winter, it's winter, the time that I'm recording this right now, I go through this phase that I want to share with you, hopefully you can relate to this. Now, I've been landscaping my whole life. I've been cutting grass since I was 12, and I'm 39. And I've been through many, many winters, many broke winters, struggling, stressed out. I've had jobs. I've worked in restaurants, washing dishes as a cook. I've worked in bar backing at bars. I was even a bartender for a couple of weeks, which I thought that was going to be cool. It was a horrible experience. That's why I only did it for a couple of weeks. And then, um, um, what else? I've worked on roofs, doing roofing, remodeled basements. But a lot of my life, I was broke during the winter. And I plowed snow for years, 15 years, actually. So diving into personal development and being terrified and broke and then spending the summer just getting enough money, then I finally learned... Well, if I'm going to be a landscaper, I might as well do something during the winter that's profitable and bank up a lot of money during the summer. And I started doing the math and crunching the numbers. And then once I got married and I had this whole new level of responsibility, I got a house and bills and stuff like that, um, it became detrimental. So the first winter that I had in 2015, yeah, it was the first time I saved up enough money where I didn't have to do anything but sit around. Now, I worked like crazy, but I had just enough money to make it through the winter. And I dove deep into personal development and meditation, and I actually broke down crying. And I started remembering times in my childhood when I used to ride bikes with my friends and had nothing but a power bar and a bottle of Gatorade. And I would just go out and jumping ramps all day and play Mortal Kombat and like play video games. and. And I, and I realized I for, had forgot about many parts of my life because I had spent years in just survival mode, running and fighting. I don't, didn't remember the last time I actually made a whole home-cooked dinner and, it, and it had family. I never had did any of that my whole life. I had two jobs at the age of 14. And by the time I was 17, I was somehow able to finagle an application and get into my own apartment. So before I was 18, I had my own place. I had been on my own at a young age. I ran away at... 15 and been on my own ever since right so but what i mean is when you're in survival mode that many years and you don't feel safe this 12-hour conversation i finally felt a very small sense of safety in our little one-bedroom apartment and all of a sudden like this whole new keith came out and i invited my wife's whole family over for dinner and i made like a turkey with the stuffing and and all this too many sides and they were like oh my god this is amazing i felt so much love and like and then the summer came it was helter skelter then back to winter and each and every single winter since then i made it this priority to dive deeper and deeper into personal development so here's what i want to sum this up with If you have this inner thing inside of you that's keeping you in anxiety and depression and frustration and hypochondria and you're just nuts and and you think that you need, you're, I don't know, I'm not a medical doctor, but if you think you have something going on, you need to, you need counseling, you might, right? Everybody could benefit from therapy. I'm actually looking into maybe getting some counseling because I want to be the best version of myself that I can be, right? Um... But then here's what happens. I think maybe I do need counseling because I'm so depressed. But then when I let all of that stuff go and I focus on proper diet, proper you know nutrition, exercise, proper sleep habits, right? Date night with my wife every Tuesday nights, and and there's money in the bank. And like when I just let go and I catch up on sleep and I get stable and calm and and just 
let go of all the craziness and the desires to want to be a multimillionaire and all this is all great. But when you just realize that you have peace in your home, I pray a lot. I love to pray. I'm, I'm, I guess you could call me a Christian. I don't really go to church, but like, man, do I pray and I love the Holy Spirit. When I finally let go, I feel there's an inner candle flame that never flickers. It can never die because it's never been born. Just to sit, there's a saying, most of a man's problems stem from his inability to sit quietly in a room alone. When you can get to the point when you can just sit quietly in a room alone and you feel a total blissful peace and you could divorce yourself from all the chaos out there, right? And there might be chaos going on. And not that you ignore the chaos and not that you don't go out and you do the right things to make sure you bring order to chaos if it's in your circle of influence in your life and your family and your patterns and your business, right? But what I'm saying is when you can finally allow, give yourself the permission to experience total, there you go, peace. It's so blissful that you realize you have everything that you need, every tool that you need to get anything done that you wanna get done. And when you get to that place of clarity, and you might have to remove a lot of layers of the jawbreaker to get to that point, and it might be a painful process, but when you can just get to peace, you realize you don't need a monster house, you don't need that new F-350 truck, you don't need to grow your business yet unless you really want to. You don't need uh, the fancy RV. I love looking at RVs and campers and stuff, right? I'm probably gonna buy one one day. when when there's so much money that it's just, I could just write a check and buy it, right? I don't want payments on something like that. That's, <laughs> so these are my thoughts. But when you can just have peace, you realize you don't need anything. You feel blessed to be able to take a hot shower, have a clean towel, family who loves you. And if you're healthy, you have everything, you have wealth. This is true, this is a fact. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. I understand all the yeah, buts. But nothing compares to how peace feels. Ah, oh, peace. <sighs> See? And that's what I wanna say. Let me know in the comments below how you're doing. I wish you all the best of success. Uh, check the description below for the Jobber Summit. Um, some people wanna get on the phone with me sometimes. If you really wanna get on the phone with me, keithkelfus.com slash call. And then I have links, I have a new course coming out, not for a while, it's called Know Your Worth. Another course I'm working out on, of all the, too much stuff, I'm, I could go on for that about, for an hour. Just check the link in the description, there's cool stuff, and um, I really appreciate you. Hope to meet you in person, shake your hand. See you in a minute.